Uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, my name is David Wilcox. I'm the product manager for uh, Fedora. I work with Duraspace. Uh, and this talk is really just to, uh, to provide an update on uh, what we've been doing uh, most recently with the uh, work around the uh, Fedora uh, API specification, as well as exploring uh, alternate implementations, uh, releasing uh, 5.0 Fedora and uh, those sorts of things. So, um, and I, I think, um, yeah, I mentioned I work with Duraspace. Uh, those of you that have been in the community for a while uh, are likely quite familiar with us as an organization. Uh, those of you that may be more new to the community, we're a relatively small not-for-profit um, working in a distributed environment. Uh, I happen to live in uh, Canada, but most of the uh, uh, folks in the organization are based in different spots around the U.S. Uh, and we uh, steward a number of open source uh, projects as well as services uh, and try to explore some of the ways that these can better connect up in our, uh, uh, in our environments around the, in, the, in the communities that we work with. Um, so I'm going to be talking about Fedora today. Uh, we do steward a few other applications, so you probably are familiar with DSpace as an uh, institutional repository software. Uh, how many of you are, have heard of Vivo or are aware of Vivo as an application? Okay, so most of you, that's cool. Yeah, Vivo is a little bit different. It's not repository software. It's more focused around uh, research information management, uh, researcher profiles uh, based around like, data and, and that sort of thing. Uh, DuraCloud, we typically run it as a service, but it is also an open source uh, software uh, application on its own that you can deploy locally and uh, is focused around um, cloud-based preservation services, particularly uh, with Amazon, but also with others. So uh, again, that's not really the focus of the talk today, but um, since I am here as the only person uh, from Duraspace at the conference, feel free to uh, come chat with me if you have questions about any of these other things that we're uh, working on as well. But uh, the focus here is, is to talk a little bit about Fedora. And I thought since, you know, I don't want to assume that everyone sort of in the room has been in this community uh, whether the Sambira community or the broader Fedora community for a long time. So I wanted to take uh, a moment uh, just to talk a little bit about kind of the, the recent history of what we've been doing with, with Fedora. Because um, I, I don't think necessarily everyone is uh, uh, you know, familiar with everything we've been doing for the last few years. So uh, you know, those of you that are relatively t uh, new to this community might not know um, that there was a fairly big shift uh, a few years ago, uh, around 2012. Uh, where we had been running uh, version 3 of Fedora for some time, but there were a lot of uh, issues that had been cropping up in the community and a lot of demand for uh, uh, some change. So I think my mic is uh, slipping down here a little bit. Let's see if I can adjust this. There. Hopefully that works. Um, so uh, around 2012, we uh, undertook uh, what was at the time a, a three-year initiative uh, called Fedora Futures, and the whole idea here was to kind of rebuild the community around Fedora, uh, both in terms of contributors and in terms of funding for the project, and also to re-architect the software. Uh, and so um, this uh, went on for a few years and culminated with the release of Fedora 4.0, and that was late 2014, early 2015. And that was a pretty substantial jump. It was an entirely new code base, uh, and uh, uh, a lot has um, happened since then. So that was in 20, well, roughly early 2015 that we released this, uh, the 4.0. Uh, since then, there have been uh, quite a few incremental releases, a lot of these kind of responding to uh, feedback from the community and trying to uh, improve the software. Uh, there have been a number of uh, deployments uh, through the community, uh, but I think we learned a lot of lessons as well uh, through developing uh, the uh, Fedora 4.x, uh, particularly around uh, the, the difficulties in architecting one application that can satisfy kind of all of the diverse use cases in our community. And, you know, Fedora is used by uh, Sambera in a lot of cases, but it's also used by the Islandora community, and there, there's a whole broader community of institutions that use Fedora uh, it, with uh, custom front ends. And so um, we're aware of over 400 deployments, but of course one of the selling points of Fedora uh, is its flexibility, uh, and it is, uh, it is proven challenging to uh, have just, as I said, this one application that does everything. And so I'll talk a little bit about our motivations for kind of moving into 5.0, moving into kind of specifying the API, and in particular this idea of alternate implementations as ways of satisfying different use cases that have kind of arisen in the community, particularly as we've been uh, 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 in this uh, uh, 4.x uh, release cycle uh, over the last few years. Um, and a lot of this, too, has led our governance groups to think uh, more concretely about where we're going with the project. So we've been a lot of time focused on, this, on uh, Fedora 4, trying to get it uh, to a state where uh, everyone is happy with it and that it's, it's working well for most people. Um, but at the same time, we want to look out a little bit further, uh, and we, uh, uh, the, the development of uh, Fedora 4 has been not just focused on the software, but also on building up a community and building up a, a governance body. So uh, 
Uh, we have governance groups that uh, are drawn from uh, member institutions, and uh, some of you are in the room here today. Um, but this group is meant to represent the broad community. There are representatives from Sambera, from Islandora, from custom uh, implementations that are, that are on that group. Uh, and we've been spending a lot of time, particularly over the last year or so, breaking into subgroups, focus on things like product technology and product position, and trying to architect uh, a, a strategic plan that will take us forward kind of into uh, a 5.0 and beyond. So uh, we'll be publishing a lot of this to the community soon because we do want input on what it is that we're thinking and where we're going. But um, a lot of this work around uh, developing the API spec and, and, and uh, developing alternate implementations, this is all kind of discussed in the strategic plan. So this is part of kind of what we're trying to do with Fedora uh, going forward. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, the technology side here, kind of uh, where we're going, what we're trying to do. Um, you, you know, many of you are uh, probably aware that Fedora is pretty heavily baked, uh, uh, steeped in linked data. Uh, the, the linked data platform is a specification that Fedora implements in, in terms of how it uh, manages resources. Uh, and so we're, we're very focused on uh, this, these kind of linked data applications as well as kind of uh, adopting modern web standards. And you'll see that as part of the, the specification kind of what services Fedora provides and the particular standards that it aligns with, uh, as well as this focus around kind of modularity and extensibility. And the idea that you know, Fedora is not a standalone application, but rather part of a broader ecosystem of applications and services. Uh, and so I, I know for many uh, uh, institutions that implement Sambera, Sambera may be the only client that's talking to your uh, Fedora uh, installation. But uh, in, in our view, we, we kind of see a, 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 a future where there's a lot of, and in the present, quite frankly, where there are uh, uh, multiple clients that might be interacting with the same Fedora repository. And so that's partly why we're kind of architecting things in, in, in the way that we have. And so there are a number of guiding principles here in terms of what we're trying to achieve with the software around durability, but also data portability, being able to get things into Fedora and out of Fedora as easily as possible. Uh, certainly standardization has been a big focus of the work that we've been doing. I'll talk a little bit about the particular standards that we've chosen to adopt with the software, but trying to get away from uh, doing things in a, in a really custom uh, way, which uh, to some degree we did in the past. Uh, and particularly on interoperability. So we are very focused on trying to uh, be able to interoperate with different uh, applications and services that uh, institutions are using. Um, so, uh, you know, and this is all just with that understanding that uh, institutions really have a strong desire for this interoperability and making sure that data can kind of uh, move between applications. So, um, I'll, I'll show kind of a visualization here and, and, you know, those of you that maybe attended my workshop a couple of days ago have seen some of this content already, so apologies for that, but it, I think it's helpful just to kind of visualize a little bit about uh, where we see Fedora in, in its place in the ecosystem. Um, so, you know, Fedora, if you're not uh, intimately aware with the, the mechanics of how things work, basically the uh, everything you put in the system is either uh, RDF or, or bi binary files. So you have containers that are composed of RDF and you have binary uh, files in Fedora. Um, so you can store those binaries in Fedora, but also you could store things uh, uh, exterior to Fedora. And one of the things that we've done in the uh, API specification is talk about uh, three different ways that Fedora can handle uh, external binary content. I'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we get going here. Um, but that's uh, as well as that, that's sort of the basic composition of the repository, then Fedora also has this uh, message-based architecture. So it, you know, every time you uh, uh, commit any kind of an action within the repository, it emits a message and you can build kind of workflows to, to act off those messages. So I know it's not, quite, it's not very common in the Sambera community to leverage uh, a triple store with, uh, with Fedora, but there are a lot of uh, folks in the Islandora community and elsewhere that uh, leverage triple stores as, as an external way to kind of index content and be able to do kind of complex linked data queries over, over that information. So that's part of the architecture here where uh, we have uh, applications that we've integrated like Apache Camel that let us uh, grab onto these messages that Fedora emits and then send them off to external services like triple stores, uh, but it could be anything really that's kind of a, acting as an external index, so an external solar index and what have you. Um, and of course, the, the API, which I'm going to be talking about here in a moment, is, is another kind of main way of integrating. So you can integrate uh, off of the messages, but you can also integrate against the API. So uh, if you think of Sambera certainly as a kind of the, the website kind of integration and a number of other things too, but um, there are many things that you might want to integrate with Fedora through the API. Certainly if you're using a IIIF image server, if you uh, have workflow tools like Archivematica, uh, if you're doing things with research data, so we think there's a strong use case around uh, building a Vivo integration, for example, and having kind of research profiles in, in, in Vivo and being able to connect up to uh, uh, data sets and things like that in, 
customer. So all that would happen through uh, the API. Uh, but then, of course, we also have this import-export utility that the community did uh, a lot of work on. And this is sort of focused around the idea that you should be able to get stuff into Fedora and out of Fedora as easily as possible, uh, either to export to uh, an external file system or potentially uh, for folks that are using things like distributed digital preservation systems, uh, exporting things in Bagot bags, uh, or just exporting kind of the raw RDF. So just being able to get things into and out of Fedora as easily as possible, and all that stuff is done uh, through the API. Uh, and that's quite deliberate because um, as we've done this uh, API specification effort, uh, we're going to be able to separate out the underlying application, uh, and this is similar to the paradigm that, that Valkyrie is following, uh, and be able to have different storage options underneath. And so to the degree that things are interacting with the API or the messaging service, rather than kind of plugging in deeply into the code of Fedora, it makes it a lot easier to be able to kind of swap out implementations and put in alternatives uh, in, the, uh, in the future. Um, uh, and this is another uh, thing I just wanted to mention, because I, I know in the Sambera community, there's not a, not a lot of usage or, or maybe even awareness of this uh, API extension framework or API X, but this is an interesting development that's come out of the Fedora community, something that uh, the folks at Johns Hopkins have been deeply involved in, but also others, uh, that adds kind of a proxy layer around the Fedora API and lets you kind of uh, proxy requests as they come in uh, and then do kind of uh, additional services that the Fedora uh, API doesn't necessarily provide by default, uh, but because, because it's being done in kind of a proxy layer, then the client is unaware that these services are not native to Fedora. So you can build in additional services, but all still kind of provide them through what uh, through the Fedora API. So um, this is one of the things that the Island Dora community is making a lot of use of uh, to build shared services. So building, for example, uh, derivative generation services through APIX and being able to have those as shareable with any uh, institution that's using Fedora and using APIX. So uh, just an interesting kind of development that's happening in the community. But I wanted to focus more on kind of what we're doing with the API specification, because this is something that's um, been a, a pretty high technical goal for the last uh, maybe two or so years in the Fedora community, and that uh, we are uh, on the cusp of, uh, of, uh, of releasing. So um, the, at a, a very high level, uh, what we're trying to do with this API spec is just kind of detail the services and interactions required uh, for an implementation to be considered a Fedora implementation. Um, so there could be multiple different software backends, and we'll talk about what some of those alternates are. But by having these things work with the API, they can all be considered Fedora implementations. And, and I should mention, too, that there are uh, folks here even in the room that have been involved with this, uh, with this effort and uh, on the editors group. Uh, and, and maybe I can just ask you know, those of you that have been involved in either as an editor or, or writing the specification, uh, you put your hand up. I just wanted to see. I know, yeah, Simeon, you have, and Esme, and, and Adam, and a few others. Yeah. So, what we've tried to do in, in, in architecting this is not do it in a really kind of insular way. We, the editorial group is made up of people uh, from the Sanvera community and also the Islandora community and others. Uh, so this is, uh, we, we've tried to do this in a really kind of cross-community way uh, and inviting input along the way to make sure that the services and the models that we're defining are useful to this community and to other communities that work with, uh, work with Fedora. So uh, in terms of why we took this approach, I mean, there's, there's a couple kind of high-level reasons here. Uh, certainly stability for clients, so we'll be releasing a, a 1.0 version of the API specification uh, alongside a 5.0 release of the Fedora uh, software implementation. And that lets us kind of separate and separately version the API uh, and the underlying software implementation. So clients can build against a version of the API uh, and not worry quite so much about what's going on in kind of the guts of the application underneath. So it adds a little bit of stability on that side, but as I said, again, another useful thing here is to support these alternative use cases. And so I'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we go. And then uh, certainly standardization has been uh, one of the main drivers here too. So uh, as you'll see, if you take a look at the spec, and I have a link to it here, uh, all of the services are aligned with um, basically modern web standards. So we're, we're not sort of reinventing the wheel here or coming up with things in a kind of very Fedora specific way. We're, we're trying to follow standardization as, uh, as, as much as possible. Um, and, and in terms of uh, what this means for Sambera, I think, you know, just being able to have a clearly defined document that tells you these are exactly what services Fedora provides and these are exactly the, the standards that we're complying with and the manner in which these services are providing. So, uh, you know, if you're building clients against Fedora, you can have some uh, comfort and some knowledge that uh, this is exactly what Fedora is, is providing for you. Um, as well, introducing more flexible support for content storage and being able to uh, have more control about where you store binary files or potentially um, you know, having more control over the underlying application itself. 
um, and ge just generally more insulation from uh, changes that are undergoing on in the application by kind of uh, you know being focused on a, a particular version of the API. It's quite likely the API will change much more slowly than the underlying application, and so there's a little bit more kind of insulation there. Um, in terms of highlights, I mean, I'm not going to go through the entire spec in this presentation, but I'll call out a couple of things that I think are really useful. Um, I, I've got a slide here that talks about exactly how we're handling external content, but I think that is useful. There's a lot of institutions that want more flexibility in terms of where they store content, and so the specification has a lot to say about kind of where you can store things and how you can store them. Um, Memento is a specification that deals with versioning on the web. It's something that uh, Herbert von der Sample and others have been involved in in trying to kind of define uh, an interaction model for how um, clients can request back uh, versions of web resources by supplying a, a date time and, and getting back a resource as near as possible to that date time. And so uh, one of the biggest changes in the specification has been uh, fully implementing Memento as the way of doing versioning, whereas before versioning was done in a very kind of Fedora specific way. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Memento, there's a link there if you want kind of an introduction to it. This is you know, a modern web standard that's focused on versioning and something that uh, we're now uh, compliant with. As well, Solid, something that Tim Berners-Lee has been involved with at MIT uh, around uh, social link data, uh, and they've been working with uh, things like web access control, and, and Fedora uh, is also uh, implementing web access control and has been using some of the, the work that the Solid project has been doing as uh, kind of inspiration for how we're uh, handling web, uh, web access control in, in Fedora. Um, so, you know, there's a number of other services here as well that are being provided, but these are kind of some of the main ones. Uh, I mentioned external content, uh, and if you're kind of wondering about the specifics there, I won't kind of read this slide in detail, but this is just here for your information. If you want to go back and have a look, there, we're basically supporting three different use cases for external content, either copying where you can kind of uh, go out and copy a file from external location and, and, and actually save a copy of it in the repository, uh, versus a redirect where um, you, if a, a client tries to access the file, the uh, the server will redirect them to wherever the location of that file actually is um, uh, on the web or, or, or wherever, uh, or a proxy scenario where uh, Fedora is kind of proxying the connection to that external content and the client is unaware that uh, they're being kind of uh, redirected in that way because it's going through the proxy. So uh, these are all kind of defined in the specification to satisfy a number of use cases in the community around being able to have some flexibility uh, with regard to how external binary content is stored. You don't have to store everything in Fedora's kind of internal storage file system, you can have uh, a lot more choice in terms of where things, uh, where things are. Um, so at a high level, this is a link to the spec if you want to take a look at it. Uh, it is, and I, I've got a timeline here, but the spec is basically done. There are a couple of things we need to uh, tick off in order to uh, actually release it, but then um, these are the main kind of uh, areas where the spec is focused. So resource management, linked data platform, that really hasn't changed very much at all, and so uh, there's not a huge change there based on the, the other stuff that's been going on in Fedora. Uh, I mentioned Memento for versioning, web access control for authorization, uh, activity streams is the particular standard we're using for notifications, and then um, binary resource fixity being done through HTTP headers. So those are the main aspects of the spec, um, and, and I encourage you to, to take a look at it. Um, in terms of the timeline, you know, we've been working on this for a while, but uh, the spec, as I said, is mostly done. Uh, I mean, I, I don't suspect we'll be making sub uh, substantive changes to it. Um, we are expecting to release a 5.0 version of Fedora here uh, this year, and we're uh, expecting to have a release candidate here quite soon. We're running uh, community code sprints that have been very active uh, over the last few weeks. So I wanted to say a word here about Fedora 5.0 because, uh, of course, that can seem a little bit scary to folks that maybe have been, are still using Fedora 3 or, or are kind of worried about moving on from Fedora 4. Um, this is really just coinciding with our adoption of semantic versioning. We've heard a lot of this from others in the same era community as well. Um, rather than putting out a Fedora 4.8, uh, we're just gonna move to a 5.0. And the fact is, if we had been using semantic versioning since the beginning of the uh, Fedora 4, we'd probably be at version 10 or 11 by now. Um, we've been using Fedora as kind of a brand name. And so every time we made a breaking change, instead of incrementing the four, we would increment the second digit. So you know, we'd do 4.1 or 4.2 instead of a five or a six. And so this was kind of something that we were stuck with for a while, and it makes it really difficult for systems administrators that are trying to figure out the impact of changes to releases because the, we're not using semantic versioning properly. So we're gonna start doing that. Uh, but we're also committing to a slower release cycle for major releases, so uh, no more than one major release per year, but of course as many minor and patch releases as needed. We don't wanna leave people hanging with security fixes. Um, so that's just to say, don't be alarmed when you see a 5.0 and a 6.0 and a 7.0 over the next few years. It's not 
equivalent to a complete overhaul of the code base the way it was between uh, three and four. Uh, I'll try to move quickly here. I know I've only got 10 minutes and I wanted to leave a little bit of time for questions. I, I think I mentioned this already, but basically we uh, want to have at least two uh, uh, implementations of the spec in order to call it released, as well as a test compatibility suite, which we have, uh, and not having any critical or unresolved uh, discussions. So there are a bunch of uh, uh, spec implementations. Uh, there are folks even in the room here that are kind of responsible for some of these um, implementations or at least involved in working on them. So. Uh, I'm not going to say a ton about each one of these, but there's links here if you want to kind of go and explore. The, the main point here is that there are a number of alternative use cases that are being explored, whether it's uh, having Fedora sit natively over a triple store and making use of the uh, external content as, as Cavendish does, uh, building on top of Ruby on Rails like Derby or uh, uh, Trilpy, or is that Trilpy? I'm never sure how to pronounce that, but <laughs> anyway, uh, ba uh, Python based uh, app, uh, implementation. Um, or uh, Drastic, which is really interesting, coming out of the University of Maryland. I think Greg Jansen's working on that one um, as a kind of a really highly scalable implementation uh, of the code base. Uh, the current implementation, which is on mode shape, but uh, likely that will change over time. I have Lake, uh, Lake Superior here with an asterisk because uh, Stefano Kosu from the Art Institute of Chicago is working on this as kind of an implementation written mostly in Python and C. Uh, it's not really a 5.0. It's not an implementation of the current specification, it's more of an implementation of the uh, 4.7 API, uh, but the goal is to bring that up to the, um, the, the long term, the goal is to bring that up to speed with the, um, the, the API that's, uh, spec that's coming out this year. So um, yeah, like I said, there's links in these slides if you wanna explore any of these, but uh, as I said, the point here is just to kind of open the door for alternative use cases and be able to have different code bases uh, to all satisfy uh, uh, different needs while having everything still be Fedora. So I'll wrap up just by mentioning a couple of other things that are going on in the community. Uh, I've, I've talked about APIX already. Uh, there is an import-export utility that's quite useful if you want to get data in and get data out, transacting in bags, or working in raw RDF. Um, how many of you have heard of the Oxford Common File Layout? I know there were some talks here already. Okay, cool. So uh, again, I, I won't say too much about that other than that. Uh, this is an effort that's come out of the Fedora community. It's not directly related to Fedora, uh, but it's uh, something that uh, will likely be implemented uh, alongside the Fedora API. So uh, this, this is sort of a, a new standard for specifying how files and folders should lay on any file system uh, or uh, any kind of storage hardware uh, in a kind of preservation-centric way. Uh, and it seems like it's uh, really picking up steam. There's a lot of interest in this, and, and I know from the Fedora perspective, we're interested in having a uh, an implementation of the Fedora API that is compliant with this uh, Oxford Common File layout. So uh, I'd encourage you to take a look at that. You can find it at ocfl.io. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just wrap up here by saying that, you know, all, all of this, all of this effort really is only possible uh, due to the contributions of the community. So all of you and, and, and everyone else in the broader Fedora community, I don't think I have to say too much about this to the Sambera community. I think we're all kind of quite well aware of how kind of community works to kind of build and sustain these projects over time. But I think this is really uh, an important part of how we, uh, uh, how we handle things and how the software survives. It's the only reason that uh, myself and Andrew Woods and Danny Bernstein, the kind of team at Duraspace, we're all funded by all of you in the broader Fedora community to kind of be able to do this stuff and, and, and sustain the software. And so um, we continue to kind of build a, a, a base of memberships. These are all the institutions that are currently funding uh, Fedora through their Duraspace memberships at, at various levels. Uh, I think we're up to 75 right now, uh, which is great, and we're always looking to add more institutions to that list at whatever level is sustainable for um, uh, sustaining the, the, uh, the software over time. Uh, so if you're on the list already, uh, I, I do want to say thank you for your contributions. It's an important way of sustaining the, the software, and if your institution is using Fedora but not yet a member, I'd encourage you to consider uh, becoming one and, and, and supporting the project. Um, and of course, those are all members of Duraspace. So uh, Duraspace itself, we have 165, I think we're up to, uh, member institutions around the world. So you can support Fedora, you can support DSpace, Vivo, wh wherever you'd like to direct your dollars. But that's uh, how we kind of sustain ourselves as an organization and sustain all these projects. Um, so I'll leave a few links here, but I think I have maybe five minutes for questions. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to take any uh, questions that anyone uh, is that right, Chris? Are we uh, five minutes? Okay, great. Oh, come here. Uh, there's a mic there. Yeah. Hello. 
I realize I should probably know this anyway, but um, I, I'm just curious if you've got any uh, time frame uh, regarding the OCFL kind of progress. Yeah, I, I can speak to that a little bit. So um, I, uh, I presented at um, IPRES recently, and uh, Simeon actually helped write a, a, a short paper on kind of describing OCFL, and we talked a little bit about the timeline. Uh, I think there was an editor's meeting actually at Oxford recently uh, where, they, where they talked about this. So as I understand it, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a goal to have kind of a draft of the specification out this year uh, and to have the full spec available next year along with uh, a, test, uh, a test suite that you, so you can verify that the uh, a server is OCFL compliant and to have some text fixtures and, and to have at least, I think the goal is to have at least it, two institutional adoptions as well. So similar to the Fedora API, you know, verifying these kinds of things. Um, so, yeah, is that more or less correct? Or? Yeah, Rosie and I are talking about it at 2 p.m. today. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to know more about OCFL specifically, uh, 2 p.m. today, there's a presentation. But, yes, I believe the timeline is to have a draft this year and, and to have a full spec next year. We've got an alpha out about now. Right. Okay. So it's maybe yesterday, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it, and it's quite readable. I, I've, I've, I've read the spec. Uh, other questions from anyone? All right, well, thanks everyone. Uh, I'll be around if uh, you have any one-on-one -on -one questions uh, during the, the rest of the day, so thank you. Thank you.